All right, so let's talk about it. Now, some of these encoders, these Ethernet encoders, let's just say, for instance, um, I have an 842E. Um, you would think, for instance, you could have that into your motion. Now, I will say that I do have it working. You can see the encoder values right here working. Um, now, the way I have this, um, and I want to express this real quick. Um, you are not going to be able to make this a servo axis where it can be followed, follow, or, you know, like even a, a read axis if it is not a uh, C or, yeah, CM. So an ECM, right? So let's just say, for instance, you go to add new module and you come up here and I'll, if this pops up, I may have to go offline for it to pop up. So let's just keep that in mind. Actually, it's, I think it's trying, but um, yeah, it's trying. So just keep in mind, you, you will have to have the, and I will show you this real quick. So E44, okay, there we go. You need to have the CM. So now, whether it be a multi-turn, single turn, whatever the case may be, whatever you have, this is considered in the category of motion. Now I have the multi-turn regular. I do not have a, so I cannot use this for motion although it is in my motion program, right? So I have all my access here, I have my Syracuse network, I have my, down here I have my SIP network. Um, you can see, easily see where I have everything working. Now if I just go toggle that, and I had this tied into an ignition system one time, um, but if I just toggle this on, you'll hear the servo, it will start. And what's going to happen is I actually I can show you that position this is the ball screw so let me open up my tag database right here just so you can see the ball screw um, we're going to actually pull up and the, here here we go so the ball screw axis my system's acting a little slow right now so I apologize for that but you know that happens when you have multiple PMs open. So we'll drag this down, uh, collapse this, or open it up, expand it. Uh, we'll come in here. Actually, we don't need all this data. Let me see if I can just get this back to an easier point. And this is one of the pitfalls of using, you know, brand new software. You run into this sometimes where Rockwell has them. Everything does not have everything perfect. So anyway, we're going to go down here and look at the position. We're not going to sit here and fight this. Um, so I'm going to have to scroll down for a little bit. Not a big deal. Um, but we'll look at the actual position. And that way you can tell that the actual position is actually working. Here's the actual position for the ball screw. It actually is you know, going up and down right now based upon what it's being told to do. Now, if you look at the logic again, it's it's still coming in here, basically going through state four, all the way down right here. It goes to state, so it's in state five right now. So it's going to go right here to position two hundred in state four. It's going to go to position ten in state five, and then it's just going to sit there and repeat itself. Um, my ball screw or my, my servo axis right here for the um, the servo wheel is, is exactly what it used to be um, if you've seen those videos but I want to talk about this encoder real quick so now how to how to scale this is really based on your application uh, I want to be clear about that um, basically so you can come in here to your uh, basically open up your profile your add-on profile and you go to configuration um, currently I have this at 360 at four revolutions now that may seem a little weird to everybody but what that's doing is it's giving me a little bit of res it's giving me the resolution I want but four revolutions 
per that rev so basically I can go down here and then come back in here and divide it by four and you can see that this will come over here if I if I just slightly turn it it will roll over at 360 so you can see that 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 would work again when it comes down to it if you tied it into like a um, like a Kartner or some kind of something that you want to just have like a 360 on um, you can you scale it based upon whatever you want to I just based it off something really simple so again coming over here <clears throat> looking at <clears throat> looking at that position taking the raw data out of it and then really scaling it down so you can again scaling it is based upon whatever your application is but just know the difference between if you're trying to use it for motion you're going to have to have that cm if you're trying to use it for again just a normal encoder ethernet encoder then that's perfectly fine for you to use this and just make sure you use it in the, the however you want now you can have revolutions per minute revolution per second if I do seconds, you'll see that it, it drastically changes. Now it's going to reset uh, for a temporary little bit. So that's going to drastically change this. So we can we can see that, that now it's revolutions per second. Uh, so that's like if how fast you want the machine to run, right? How, I mean, how fast is your machine running? So you just have to base it upon like whatever you're doing. And that's that's where these Ethernet encoders are really sophisticated because you when it comes down to it you can scale it and you can do what you want to based upon you know your digital system right or your your um, well your 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 setup in your your PLC you don't necessarily have to have a specialized encoder that you order from a specialized vendor or spend this and that and the third you can have this multi-turn encoder and just basically use it for whatever you're going to use it for, right? Um, again, this goes back to the Rockwell situation. Now, you can't use this encoder in like an ABB situation, but you can use this encoder, um, like if, say, for instance, you wanted to use it, because uh, generally an ABB system like uh, or ABB drives, their encoder would go back directly to their actual drive, not their control system, their drive. But again, you can use this as a uh, a regular encoder for many 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 different applications I mean you probably got a hundred and one applications that you can think of that just want to use encoder but for those that want to use it for a servo access and have it as a follow something like that and do not have it coupled to anything or you have it coupled to something that is um, something like you want to you want another servo to follow it like if I wanted my ball screw servo to follow this right I mean, I could do it the way it's set up right now, but I can't gear it to it because it's not a servo axis. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You're going to have to have that CM if you're going to do it that way. And I have everything in my system working. So um, with this said, you know, I, I can rename this file because um, this was originally made in when I when I made this file. This was in 03 right so again when it comes on to it i can i can rename the file and have it per what it is you know i don't have necessarily have to keep it as that's the name of the file but for the sake of argument for what we're doing and i want to sh shut this down real quick so i'll just do um, i'll just unlatch this real quick and that completely shuts down my servo movement right here so if I started it back, the first thing it does is it homes. So just so for for y'all, I guess for everybody that hasn't seen that video and that needed to see that video, it, it's going to come back and actually the very first thing it should do is home. So with that said, hopefully you know you guys learned a lot from that video. The premise behind what I was trying to get at is again these these SIP encoders. Like I said, if you want to use the regular one, you can use it for whatever your application is. But if you intend to use it for motion in motion, um, like an axis or something like that, so you can gear it to something, you're going to need that CM model instead of the regular one. So hopefully you learned a lot from that video. 
and we'll see you guys on the next one.